Disc harrow or tiller? Which one's better for your project? guys, Zach here from Kubota Lynchburg, and today I'm out in the field, kind of literally, about to test a disc harrow versus a tiller. So I get the customers asking all the time, which one do I need for putting in a food plot, or which one do I need for my garden? Um, which one works better? Which one's the better one to get? Um, and it's a difficult question to answer, um, and it really depends on what you're using it for, but there's definitely some pros and cons to each of them. So today I'm going to go over those pros and cons real quick, as well as put them in the field, test them, see what the ground looks like after we've done a couple passes, see how it acts on kind of this fresh grass behind me. Um, this has been used before for a food plot, this area that we're going to be using, uh, but it's been a couple years, so it's not loose soil or anything. So it's going to be kind of real world application, testing it and putting them to, uh, through their paces. So first we're going to talk pros and cons, one versus the other. I've got the tiller hooked up right now. So some of the pros to the tiller are going to be um, the fact that it mixes the soil very well. So on a disc harrow, it's going to leave clumps and clods and chunks of dirt and everything. Um, whereas the tiller, you know, you have to go slower with it. Um, it's going to mix that soil up. It's going to be a better mixture. It's going to leave less of those clumps and everything like that on it. Um, and it's going to be a better system overall. And you do have a forward, um, forward rotating tiller and a reverse rotation tiller. The reverse rotation, you have to go a little bit slower and it mixes a little bit better. The forward rotation is a little bit better for that fresh ground. It's usually a little bit cheaper. Um, and if you have a lot of rocky soil or anything like that, that forward is better. But either way, a tiller is going to mix it up better than a disc harrow will. And that's the best thing about a tiller is that fine soil that you end up with. Mixes the grass in, mixes those little root particles and everything in and chops it up. Now you can over prepare soil with a tiller. Um, it's not in most applications that's the case, but technically you can over prepare soil. You can actually mix it too much and cause some degradation to it. So you do have to be careful, but that's not a app applicable to most people or most situations. Um, another nice thing about a tiller is the overall weight of it, and it's very close to the tractor. Um, so if you have to use this for counterbalance for other applications, it is nice to have a tiller on the back. It's not sticking way far off the back of it. It's compact and in close to the tractor. Now, some downsides, of course, one of the first ones is going to be price. Um, a tiller is almost always more expensive than a disc harrow. It's got more moving parts. It's got chains and sprockets and gearboxes and drive shafts, multiple drive shafts, replaceable tines. It is definitely more expensive up front. Um, again, you get that better result from it in most cases, but it's more expensive up front. It's also a little bit more difficult to hook up because you have to you know, hook up your drive shaft to it and have that running. You need to have the right PTO powered tractor where a disc harrow, it's just three point. You're just dragging it, you're just pulling it. It's as easy as hooking up a three point and that's it. Um, some of the other things is upkeep cost on a tiller. You know, those uh, blades underneath, depending on how many you got, you know, you probably have 30, 40, 50 blades underneath. You break some of those, you're gonna have to put those on. Whereas a disc harrow here, you break a blade on it. Um, all right, simple enough, you know, you can bolt another one up to it, but it's very difficult to break one of those disc harrow blades. So it's gonna cost you a little bit more in the long run. It's gonna cost a little bit more upkeep, a little bit more maintenance, but usually it's gonna give you that better finished result. Um, you also have to go much slower with a tiller because you're mixing that soil and it's digging in the whole section and everything. You have to move slower with a disc harrow. Uh, I mean, with a tiller. That disc harrow, you can move a little bit faster with. You can roll with it. If it's digging in and going, especially after your first or second pass on that soil, you can roll much faster. You go too fast with a tiller and you can damage it or you just won't be mixing it properly. So disc harrow is going to be a little bit faster. In most cases, if you're doing a food plot, a disc harrow is the way to go. You know, you're not fine seeding. You're not dropping seeds like corn planting or anything like that into it or planting crops. Um, that kind of stuff. That's where a tiller is going to come in. If you're doing food plots to go deer hunting or food plots just to, you know, better improve your area and better improve the soil quality, a disc harrow is going to be your more affordable way to go. It's just not going to be as pretty or mix it up as well. So um, trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to go over on those two. Um, realistically, what I'm going to do is I'm hop on the tractor. I'm going to do a couple passes with the tiller and see what that first pass looks like. Um, tiller should, uh, another pro of it, it's going to grab itself in and push itself in. And you're, you're not going to have to first break up that soil with a tiller. Now with the disc here, I'm a little afraid that's going to be a little too light today. I just have a standard five foot one out here. 
um, it might not dig into the soil. I might actually have to pre-prep the soil with like a single bottom plow um, and dig it up with a ripper shank or something like that to actually get it working properly. That is the nice thing about a reverse rotation tiller. It's gonna grab the soil and dig itself down in um, and it's gonna go ahead and basically start that process without having to pre-prep the, you know, the soil preparation site um, beforehand. So again, we're gonna take a look at these. We're gonna put it in real world testing. Um, I've never tilled ground myself. I just know all about it. Um, and so we're gonna test that out today. So check it out. One of the keys is going to be start your tiller at a low RPM. So you wanna have a rotating slow and then increase your RPMs as you go. Um, don't ever engage your PTO at high RPMs. You're gonna jolt it, you could break a shear bolt or something like that. And ideally with a tiller, you wanna have a hydrostat transmission if you're going slow. So I got a hydrostat here in low range. I'm gonna just roll slow with it. So I'm gonna pull forward a little bit and then start her up. Oh, hold on, OSHA, wear my seatbelt. There we go, now you guys can't yell at me. So my three-point hitch is all the way down, just let it ride on the ground. See it chopping up. It is a little dry out. And there's definitely some rocks, but it's digging in there. I'm afraid the disc arrow is not going to be able to uh, penetrate this ground by itself. Hill sides, keep your loader down, keep that center of gravity low. Definitely got some nice rocks in here. So, real quick, you can see the differences between one pass and two passes. I'm even going to do a third pass on that top section and it is usually very important to do multiple passes especially the first time you're breaking up that ground. So that difference is pretty noticeable how much it's going to mix up each time you go through. It's going to be the same way with the disc arrow so make sure you're doing your multiple passes to get that mixture better and chop up the small stuff a little bit better. So I'm going to do one more pass with the top section and really show off what it should look like. All right, we're gonna try the disc arrow next. Tiller seemed to work pretty well. I'm a little worried about how much weight this disc arrow has to it. It weighs about 530 pounds. Hoping it does the job. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is on the tiller, we have those side skid shoes you can see uh, in the previous uh, section of the video. Um, that is your depth limiter on that. So I have it set about five inches. So we were only tilling four to five inches deep with that tiller, so not a ton. Um, on a disc arrow, especially one size bigger than this that might have 18 inch instead of 16 inch discs, you can get a lot deeper if that soil is working and as you do your multiple passes. So you can definitely dig deeper and mix up that deeper soil with one of these disc arrows as it'll dig 8, 10, 12 inches with the bigger discs and everything like that. So keep that in mind as well.
we go, that'll work. So what, what we're doing here is we're adjusting the gangs, uh, is what these are called, trying to make it a little bit more aggressive. After, what, five, six passes, I wasn't counting. It started to dig in a little bit, but not a ton. So I'm trying to make it angle a little bit, make it a little bit more aggressive and see if it starts to catch it all. Otherwise, out comes the single bottom plow. All right, guys, so you just saw me do more passes with the uh, disc. Again, you can still see the chunks of dirt and grass and everything in it. I can pick up some of these clods, and it's not going super deep right now. I'm actually impressed that it did it without plowing first. It did start to dig in, but you had to angle those gangs. Learning experience for me. Um, definitely makes it more aggressive. Um, what I do know, though, as you saw at the end, realistically, when you're using a disc harrow, you want to come at it from multiple directions. You want to go horizontal, then vertical. Heck, if it's rough enough ground, you might do that another two or three times. You can kind of see in the middle where I did that, we do have a little bit finer, looser soil for it. Definitely tilled a little bit better than if it's only one direction where you keep getting these a uh, little bit more clumps and clods and it hasn't dug as deep, these bigger pieces. So go at it from two directions if you're going to be using the disc arrow. Again, you can move a lot faster and you can also back up with the disc arrow, which is nice, unlike the tiller since the blades are only sharp on one side. Um, and if a disc here, if you find one of these bigger rocks, it just pushes itself up and over. Not a big deal. Throw that off to the side and on a tiller, you can hurt your tiller with it. So summary, disc here is cheaper, less to go wrong, less to maintain, less to upkeep, but it's definitely going to take, well, not maybe, maybe not definitely, but in this scenario, it would definitely take longer to do a bigger section as you have to go over it so many times. With a tiller, you might drive a little bit slower, but it's going to chew it up and have that very clean look on this dirt. Um, you know, you just see the disc arrow ones and on this tiller after two or three passes in the same direction, I mean, this is, and it's actually deeper, this is perfectly mixed soil here, even with the rocks and everything in it. So your preference, your choice, if you have the money for a tiller, if that's what you need, but that seems to be the working differences between the disc arrow and the tiller. Mm -hmm.